entire world is currently battling the same disease at the same time makes international comparisons unavoidable right now. And it is so striking to look at how we have done in relation to the rest of the world to put into stark contrast just what a disaster our response has been. Now, before I show you this data, it's also worth noting, and this is important to be uh, fair here and accurate, that there are a ton of different factors that lead to whether or not a place has an outbreak. Genetic mutations in the virus that some people believe could uh, lead to increased transmissibility. How much seeding an area got can also play a role. So it isn't totally exact, precise comparison about which country is better than the other. But in the aggregate, right, take a step back. The United States is the world's biggest economy. It has less than 5% of the world's population and nearly 30% of the world's coronavirus deaths. So the smart people at ncoronavirus.org have been compiling data from dozens of countries over the past few months and have created graphs showing the daily new cases of COVID-19 with a 10-day average. This is what the graph looks like for the U.S. You see a sharp rise in cases. It hasn't really tapered off yet, right? It's trending down. Now, some of that likely the result of increased testing, and we've seen the rate of positive tests steadily decline, which is good. But to put that in context, that curve you see there, here's how some other places are doing. And coronavirus.org divided countries into three categories. The first group is the countries that have appeared to have successfully suppressed transmission of the disease, that that curve has come all the way down so that they are barely registering any new cases. That's where you want to end up, right? They call these the winners. And there are a bunch of them. We've been talking a lot about a small cluster of countries that have gotten this right, like South Korea and Taiwan. But there are a wide variety of places in this group with very different levels of development and economic wealth and even governing styles. So listen to this list of the 32, 32 winning countries. You'll notice we're keeping the U.S. graph on the left of your screen so you can see how much better these places are faring compared to us. We have Andorra, Australia, Austria, Bhutan, Cambodia, China, Croatia, Cuba, Djibouti, Estonia, Greece. Look at Greece. Greece is often criticized as a kind of governing basket case in Europe, and look how well they have done. Iceland. Iceland's another one. Jamaica, Jordan, Kosovo, Latvia, Lebanon, Lebanon, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Mauritius, Monaco, Montenegro, New Zealand, Slovakia, Slovenia, South Korea, Taiwan, Thailand, Tunisia, and finally Vietnam. All of those countries in the green, beating the coronavirus and doing much better than us. And the next group is countries that are nearly there. They're suppressing the virus, but they're still recording new cases. These are all the, the yellow graphs, right? You see a bunch of countries, particularly in Europe, that are there. And then there's a the group that's still in trouble. These are the countries where recorded cases are still going up or they're going down very slowly. Despite the fact that the last week or two of data from the U.S. overall is somewhat hopeful and things are moving somewhat in the right direction, we are still in the red in a group that perhaps coincidentally also happens to include some of Trump's favorite world leaders like Putin of Russia, Duterte of the Philippines, and Bolsonaro in Brazil. This crisis is, among other things, a kind of global test of governance. And it is just really hard to look at all the data and come to any conclusion other than that our leaders are failing.